So, um, welcome to this talk and uh, what we are going to do in this talk is talk about code vulnerabilities, the detection and the remediation using Gen AI and the demo aspect of it. But before we get started, a quick introduction. So I'm Amit, I'm a solutions architect, uh, I'm based out of New York City and I've been with AWS since five years and I've been helping customers in their modernization and migration journeys to the cloud. Also joining me is Avi. Hey everyone, I'm Avichal Chum. I'm also a solutions architect here at AWS. Been with AWS about three years now, um, based out of New York City. And like Amit, I help our customers also on the journey to migrate to the cloud in a well-architected fashion. Um, I hope you're excited for the talk today. Awesome. So before we get started, let's do a quick show of hands on uh, how many of you use Lambda functions in your environments? Oh, wow. That's great. And then how many of you have some sort of uh, static code analysis or dynamic code analysis running? Sweet. That's, that's like a major, so that's awesome. So this is a perfect talk. Uh, so going back to the agenda, we'll just level set with the shade responsibility model for Lambda functions. We'll talk about the code vulnerability management. We'll talk about the remediation using Gen AI and then we have a demo. So, uh, just to level set on the shared responsibility model, AWS manages the underlying infrastructure and the operational aspects of the cloud uh, but, and the operating system in case of Lambda functions, but you are responsible for managing the code security. So that means you're responsible for managing uh, even the IAM uh, access to your Lambda functions as well as the other uh, IAM that is used within your function to talk to other services. Uh, however, you are not alone in this. Your application teams and DevOps teams are not alone in this. AWS does provide you with a set of services that can help you with vulnerability management. So that's where Amazon Inspector comes into picture. Um, Amazon Inspector is a fully managed vulnerability management service that continuously scans your AWS workloads for uh, software vulnerabilities, uh, package vulnerabilities, and un untrusted uh, unintended network access. In terms of, like oftentimes, like what I have seen is enterprises have tens and thousands of accounts and people deploy Lambda functions all across. So it becomes equally important from a security standpoint to understand any, any vulnerabilities that are there either in the packages or in the codes once the functions are deployed. That's where uh, the multi organized or the organizational aspect of inspector comes into picture. Uh, Inspector does scan your EC2 and uh, container images in ECR for package vulnerabilities, but for this talk, we are going to focus on the Lambda functions. Some of you might have been using the standard scanning with Lambda functions. Uh, I just wanted to compare and contrast how that differs from the code scanning. So with the standard scanning, uh, you analyze the package's vulnerability. So let's take an example. Uh, if you have an application that is managing, that is doing some authentication and you have a JWT uh, token that you're processing, you might be using a library such as Python JWT. So managing the vulnerabilities within that package is the part of the standard scanning. It can be activated all alone across your environment. And it gets activated when you do an initial first time invoke when you activate inspector, but also when there's a new update uh, or there's an update in the database of the CVs for inspector. So that's when the scans get generated. And there are, in terms of remediations, it does suggest what are the new package versions that you could use for standard scanning. So coming to the code scanning, which we are here for. So code scanning feature was actually GA'd last reInvent in 2023. And this would be the place where it analyzes the lines of code within your Lambda function to detect uh, common CWEs. And things, some of the most common one in top 25 are SQL injection, as well as unintended data exclosure, um, as well as weak cryptography. So in order to activate the code scanning, you need to have standard scanning. That's a prereq. So, and it again gets invoked invoked during the first activation of inspector and apart from that whenever you update your code so if your application teams are constantly updating your codes via your ci cd cycle that's when it gets triggered again as well as when we detect in our databases that there's a potential uh, new cwe that's when the initial scan runs and in terms of remediation inspector does power inspector does allow you to have remediation using gen ai uh, 
in terms of code scanning, uh, Inspector actually uses uh, automated reasoning and machine learning to do the detection of the code to find out the vulnerabilities. And in order to do remediation, that's where the Gen AI piece comes into picture. And this is not the first time uh, that we are doing this. Uh, this has been actually Amazon Inspector and this particular remediation practices have been used at AWS and Amazon before. So it borrows the best practices from AWS security practices and it has undergone over a million plus code vulnerability assessments at Amazon internally. So it's, it's a battle tested feature and it provides you once you detect a vulnerability, we provide you with the remediation uh, which Avi will be going over shortly in the demo. But these remediations are offered uh, in a plug and play manner where you can download the patches and then you can plug it in a flow through a CI CD cycle. Uh, we always recommend that within the CI CD cycle, have your developers uh, review the code remediations so that it uh, so that it meets your requirements before committing them. So if we take a step back and zoom out of this, where do we see the code scanning, right? So in terms of your developers, typically we see that if you are using an IDE environment, you could have the static code scanning embedded in your IDEs to detect these vulnerabilities. Uh, within your pipeline, whether you are using Amazon code pipeline or any other pipeline, you could use the code guru security to scan for the security findings. But Sometimes uh, there are new findings that are being generated and your CI-CD cycle has already passed. So your code is actually running in a Lambda function and that's when you want to have something that scans in a post-deployment manner. That's where Amazon Inspector can be used to do the code scanning. And whenever there is, the other aspect of it is when, uh, whenever there are new CWEs being generated, that's where Inspector will be able to detect them because it's towards the right end of the spectrum. Uh, but this holistic, this slide is aimed to give the holistic view of where we see code scanning being done. So with that, uh, talk is good, doing is better. So we'll switch over to a demo, and are we, and hopefully the demo gods are with us. Yeah. Uh, we are going to showcase uh, a demo where we are going to go over an anatomy of a finding, as well as generate new findings and show how the whole flow works in a CI/CD pipeline. All right, so um, the fir first things first, um, the architecture diagram for the demo that we're going to be presenting today is something like this, where the lambdas are constantly being monitored by Amazon Inspector, and Am uh, any findings that Amazon Inspector detects, um, EventBridge is integrated with it using a rule for the new, uh, for the new findings. From there, there's a simple notification service that will alert your SecOps team of any new findings that exist. And at the same time, using the patch that Amit was mentioning, a code pipeline can be triggered that will start the process to automatically remediate this. Of course, you can have a manual uh, person, a human in uh, loop review to actually approve or deny it. But one of the best feature, uh, I guess, benefits of this is, let's say you have hundreds of lambdas running in production, um, and there's a day zero vulnerability that gets announced. Inspector will find that, and it will notify that. Now, rather than go and manually modify the code for hundreds of these lambdas, Inspector is enabling you using those patch files and using those Gen based recommendations to uh, modify your CI/CD pipelines and push the code a lot quicker and have those fixes in place. Um, with that, we're going to move to the live demo. Um, so in this, um, like most things, we're going to begin with the AWS console and starting, um, and from there we'll head out into Amazon Inspector. Um, from Amazon Inspector, uh, your screen might look slightly different if you haven't activated Inspector in the past. Um, but once you click on Activate Inspector, this is the screen that you'll go to where you'll have the findings um, already, some of the findings already present. From there, we're going to go to the account management screen. Um, from there, yeah, we're, we're going to go to the account management screen and go and activate uh, code scanning. So we'll have to manually activate a Lambda code scanning um, to enable it. Usually, by default, it's just the Lambda standard scanning. Once Lambda code scanning is enabled, we'll then move on to the resources section on the left. And from there, we're going to go into the Lambda functions that are available. Um, on the top, like Amit mentioned, standard scanning is enabled by default. So you're going to see in this particular case, there's five Lambdas that are um, currently being actively monitored. 
Um, and at the bottom, you're going to see the code scanning screen, which is where uh, out of the five lambdas, there's four that already have findings within them. And there is one lambda, which is the SQL injection lambda, that doesn't have a finding in it. So what we'll do is we're going to go to um, the, the lambda, and we'll actually introduce a vulnerability in this particular SQL injection lambda. So I do have some code already prepared, which, is, which has the vulnerability within it. Um, I'm going to just copy it and paste it in the lambda. And then we're going to directly deploy it. Obviously, do not do this in production. Do not, uh, uh, do not deploy the Lambda directly in uh, production. But in this so particular case, um, to speed up things, we're pushing the code directly okay. into production. Right, cool. um, so while, while that is being deployed, we'll look okay. at one, uh, one of the findings that were found, which is the hard-coded okay. credentials. Yes. Um, so from here, you can see okay. the function yeah. where the okay. vulnerability so exists. No, um, you, you can also um, uh, see the severity, which is in this particular case, it's a critical severity. And then um, you're going to see the CWE number for this particular Lambda. Um, once you click into it, you can get a lot more details, uh, and you'll, you'll see the remediation that Lambda is, sorry, that inspector is going to propose. Um, so yeah, let's just close the portion. And then um, over here, it's just the basic details on why this is a problem, why it needs to be fixed. Um, you're going to get the exact line details of where the uh, issue exists in this particular case. You can see that it exists on line number six, which is the um, which is where the AWS secret credential is directly exposed. And then at the bottom, we're going to see what the remediation is and why this needs to be fixed. Which is um, that hey, I mean, uh, you, you're basically granting unauthorized access to your systems um, because of this hard-coded credential vulnerability that exists. Um, where the generative AI pieces come in. Now, this is a very trivial example. We'll look at a lot more complicated examples. But at the bottom, you're going to see that uh, inspector is telling you the line that you need to delete in order to fix this. And using generative AI, it's proposing alternative lines of code that you need to use in order to fix this particular vulnerability. Um, from there, we're going to move forward. Um, we're going to take, uh, like, you can use these lines and modify it if you want to manually do it. But like I said, we had introduced a new vulnerability on the SQL uh, injection lambda. Yeah. So I'm going to go to that particular lambda and show that inspector already found this vulnerability. So once I scroll to the bottom, um, you'll see that the SQL injection vulnerability is already found. And this was done in less than 60 seconds. So this is not something that's running once a day. It's not something that you're running manually on demand. You update a Lambda, and inspector is in near real time scanning it for any vulnerabilities. If a new vulnerability gets introduced, if there's a day zero vulnerability, inspector will scan all your lambdas to see if there's any new vulnerability. So let's say there's some code running that's been running for two years. It hasn't been updated in the last two years. You're still getting notified of vulnerabilities that exist in those lambdas. And you don't have to manually start and trigger those scans. At the same time, we saw the event bridge pipeline. So this is the notification that you're getting, your SecOps team is getting. It's not pretty, but uh, you can obviously use JSON Prettify to uh, pr um, make it uh, in a more human-readable fashion. But you're seeing that the um, SQL, there's a SQL injection rule ID that got triggered. It's a high notification. And most of all, you're also getting a recommendation on how this remediation needs to be fixed. Um, it's telling you that there's an unsanitized SQL input that's being detected. And you need to fix those particular lines in order to fix this vulnerability. Just like this notification came to an email, this similar notification will also trigger uh, the CI-CD pipeline in order to fix that. But before that, let's dive into the SQL injection vulnerability. Earlier, we saw the hard-coded credentials. Now we're looking at the SQL injection, in which case it's telling you that, hey, line number 12 is the one that is problematic. And again, using generative AI, it's proposing an alternate set of lines that you need to use in order to fix this particular vulnerability. We were speaking about the patch command earlier, and that's this download button that you see right now. Um, once you click on download, you're, gonna, you're going to get a downloadable patch file, which is the same uh, lines that you saw. There's a negative line, which you need to delete, and there's the addition lines. 
So you can use this patch file automatically in your Git repositories, and you can also use it in your CI/CD pipeline to automate this entire process and have the code ready to be published once uh, you have a human in the review loop um, and get it published to those hundreds of lambdas, or even if it's 10 lambdas, just getting it out much quicker. Um, next, we're looking at event bridge. Within event bridge, um, this is the rule I was talking about, the Amazon inspector rule, where whenever there's a code vulnerability that gets detected within inspector, this particular rule in event bridge gets triggered. And under the targets, there's two different targets that are available. The first one would be the um, SNS pipeline, which is what I got on my email. So the moment this rule got triggered, I got an email notification about the vulnerability. And the second target is the code pipeline target. Um, once I click on code pipeline, you'll see that the code pipeline was also just triggered a minute ago. So the patch file that we just saw, the code pipeline is already has the code ready to go for you to, for the patch to be remediated. And the, at the bottom, there's a manual human in the re, uh, review option. This is an optional item. So you, if you don't want it, you can completely skip this. But uh, ideally, a SecOps person or a developer would review the changes that are being proposed. They approve it, and the, uh, the changes are ready to be deployed into production for all your lambdas to quickly fix this. Um, and, the, and that's where or a generative AI can really help you out. So rather than spend days or hours figuring out every single area where it needs to be, where your code needs to be updated, or what all changes need to be made to fix it, um, using generative AI, all those lines of changes are automatically re ready for you and uh, ready to go um, for, for your uh, uh, Lambda pipelines. And then um, with that, we're going to move to the next slide. Um, just recapping what we uh, saw so far. So um, what you saw is that um, code scanning needs to be, first of all, manually enabled. So do keep that in mind. Usually it's just standard scanning that's enabled. Um, within Inspector, you do need to go and enable code scanning. And once you enable code scanning, um, those remediations are readily available to you in a plug and play fashion. So you don't have to build custom complex pipelines integrated with other LLMs or build your own pipeline figuring out how to fix code. Within Inspector, you're not only getting those, remedi uh, getting those vulnerability notifications, you're also getting the remediations, the changes that need to be made, and you can integrate it in your CI CD pipelines using the downloadable patches and make them ready to go to ha uh, have an end to end pipeline um, in order to fix this. Um, and yeah, that's uh, pretty much it. Uh, there are, uh, li like, uh, like we're saying, for all the inspectors in production, you only need to, sorry, all the lambdas in production, you only need one uh, inspector to, uh, to be instantiated. It can monitor all the accounts within a region and all the different lambdas within a region. You also have the option to suppress particular lambdas. So if you don't want some lambdas to be scanned, you, you can set those manual rules or you can suppress manual findings if you don't want those findings to come up again and again. Those are some of the uh, features of inspector where everything's available in that one single zone. Um, with that, thank you all for coming.